Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this has been enlightening, a little bit like speaking in a foreign language. <laughs> but so let me, uh, let me start out, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth because I'm a rookie here, but 3.5, uh, I get the impression that has the longest span as far as distance goes. Well, it depends which frequencies you're talking about. Compared to millimeter wave spectrum, which is much higher, 28 gigahertz. Uh, well, let higher. me get right down to it. If we're using something in rural America, I'm hearing 3.5 is what you want to use. What's the span of 3.5? Can you tell me, uh, and does the, the, the flatland versus mountains have an impact? It does. Flatland, mountains, what, uh, one of the biggest... Uh, so if we're on prairies, how far would it reach? So, so we've done testing in, in those different types of markets, and in prairies where, where it actually is maximized, we, yes. we believe the cell edge between the tower and the edge of the cell, where, yeah. so where you can still get 25 by 3 megabit coverage yeah, yeah. is 5 miles. 5 miles. Okay, so uh, there's going to be a lot of boxes put up around. You guys have, have, have talked uh, about it. Um, what kind of money will it take today's dollars to make 5G a reality everywhere? So our companies are prepared to invest $275 billion yeah. of their own money to and build that out 5G. And that does it all? That does the whole country? Um, that's, that's where we're going to start. Uh, okay, so I'm trying to get an idea on how much it costs to do the whole country. Because my guess is you're going to start in New York City, Chicago, and Miami, and Houston, and Phoenix, and San Diego. And Big Sandy will not be on that list, okay? So the question is, what's it going to cost to make sure Big Sandy is on that list? So, Senator, I think there are two, two important goals that we have, and one is to connect all of America, and the other is to make sure that we win this race. And I think the good news is that Airwaves and Streamline do that because Airwaves has this I, rural dividend. I, I, I got that you. Gives You're right. And if 10 we're going to if, rural areas that it, will help build it out. I got you, and, and I love you. You know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but the truth is, if we're going to win the race, I want to make sure that where where'd you go to the wedding at in South Dakota? Isabel. <laughs> Isabel, South Dakota is connected up too. Okay, because the truth is, is if rural America and by the way, I get it, people's where the the construction goes. If rural America isn't part of that equation, we don't win the race in my town. I think it's important. I think the mobility fund at the FCC is important. Okay. I think the rural so band. Is, and I also Senator, think that the low band that's okay. in low I, band, not 3 out 5, it's lower. Is there, is it's there also an anybody on this panel that knows how much it would cost in today's dollars to have 5G everywhere in the country? Senator, our, our member companies are already launching the satellites to be able okay. to do that. So. All right. And is there any idea on how much of that total figure would be paid for by the taxpayers? Much like broadband that we're doing now. There's a fair amount of it's done private sector. There's a fair amount of it done by Congress. Is there any idea? Is it going to be a 50-50 split we anticipate? Uh, 75 federal dollars, 25 private? Any idea? This is all with private equity. Private, private. It's all going to be private dollars. Yes. We're not going to have to set aside any dollars for 5G? Not, not for satellite 5G. Okay, but what about the others? The mobility fund is about $500 million uh, a year over the next 10 years. And that will get it done? Uh, that's why we think that the rural dividend will be a great additional boost to that. Okay. Okay. But the rural dividend is the opposite argument. That goes to rural America. How about everybody else? Is it, will it get it everywhere is the point. Our what I'm trying to figure out is, is this, so you know, that, you know, it's going to cost some money to do this. Is it, what's the taxpayer's share going to be? And the taxpayer gets the benefit, by the way. So what's the share going to be? Well, as we roll out these networks, we're, we're, we want to roll them out as fast as we can, which yep. is one of the reasons why Streamline is important, because gotcha. more the, the longer it takes and the more it costs to roll out to the big cities, the longer it's going okay. to take to get to the smaller cities. Okay. I got a couple more questions. When do we start, start first start implementing 4G? By which, by the way, I still don't have where I live. But when do we first, don't even have 3G. Uh, when do we first start implementing 4G? How many years ago was it? About tw 2010. Yeah. 2010. So eight years ago. And when do you anticipate rolling out the 5G? Has it already started or is it due to start? Never. It's, it's underway. It's underway right now. And how many years do you think it will take to roll that out? Well, one of the things, Senator, it's a constant process, so it's never, quote, unquote, finished. Yeah, 4G but isn't finished. 4G yeah. isn't finished either. That's why I talked in my testimony. We're constantly developing okay. enhancements. So is there a 6G out there? Uh, not yet, but... Uh, you anticipate it, it, there will be. It, I'm sure there will be, yeah. Okay. Um, 
but, and, right. and, and when we roll okay. out 6G, we'll still yeah. be working on 4G to enhance so, it. Okay, so that's good. So I, I want to talk about precision egg just for a second. So this is this is more for you, Mr. Stroop. Um, it, it, it's, it's operated by by GPS right now, um, at least the, the precision egg that I'm aware of, the one that sets the seed from your previous round to the next round eight inches apart or six inches apart or three inches apart. It's an amazing technology. We don't have 5G where I'm at, but we've got that amazing technology. Why do we need 5G for precision egg? The 5G capability is to provide connectivity for monitors, other types of sensors. So in addition to the, the location capability, it will provide access to additional information. So at some point in time, there still needs to be an operator in the combine or the, or the tractor now. At some point in time, we need 5G to get to a point where you can remotely operate that piece of equipment. You have the opportunity remote, to remotely operate the equipment. You have the opportunity to use sensors to establish the right amount of fertilizer, et cetera. I will have about 380,000 questions for the record. Thank you all very much. <laughs>